Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. Just wanted to thank you all so much for those of you just tuning in. Last episode, last video, I asked uh, the subscribers here if they could do me a favor and go over and subscribe to my friend Rob, Weekend Shedhead, over in the UK. And uh, he was at 800 uh, subscribers. So I said, let's see if we can get him over 1,000. Within two hours, two and a half hours, he was over 1,000 subscribers. So thank you so much. I always say it. And I'm not just saying it, you know, to be, uh, you know, just to, to blow sunshine. I'm saying it because I really feel that we have the best subscribers of any channel on YouTube. And I've always said it. We have a, such a tight community, such great people out there. Thank you so much for that. And you know what's so funny? Rob's channel, I'm sure you've seen it, he has a, a, a shed and it's such, you know, it's so organized and so nice. And I always leave comments saying, man, you make me feel bad. Because of Rob and his channel, I am going to reorganize my shop as soon as the weather breaks, as soon as it gets cooler. I'm going to do a shop reorganization because, uh, you know, I've gone too long with a mess. And, you know, it's not good to have a messy shop, uh, but Rob's shop is real uh, inspiration for the rest of us. And especially when you see those lights, when he puts on those disco lights, forget it. It's over the top. So uh, thanks so much for that. Really appreciate it. So today, like I said, it's very hot down here. Don't want to be down here too long. Once I put the lights on, the big lights, it gets hot quick and it's already hot. So let's just see what we can do. We'll, we'll dig up some stuff and make a good episode. Let's get right okay, to it. Okay, first up, you remember last week we did these beautiful Utica 1000 pliers and... Uh, Everybody liked these, you know, but um, I broke a punch in trying to remove that rivet. And uh, you could see here, you know, this is a super hard material. And this punch was made by Wild. Now, I have a couple of these uh, punches that like a pin punch, more or less. But um, you remember a lot of times when I'm doing my motor work or something, I have to separate the casing of the motor. This Proto professional was another broken punch that's i didn't do this but somebody ground and this thing has come in handy so many times so many times you need like a flat area to bang it off and uh i have to tell you you know what's so funny i don't get upset when i break tool i if i break a, a screw or a nut in something i get upset but when i break a tool i don't know what it is about me i always feel like it's an opportunity to make a new tool and that's exactly what happened with this uh this one here so we're going to make, now you just got to figure out what kind of profile you want to make out of this. Now, you really want to use the grinding uh, stone to do this because it's uh, very, very hard. And you don't want to overheat this because you want to keep that temper. So let's get the grinding wheel out and see what we can make. Okay, out here's this. my Craftsman 6-inch bench grinder I've had since I'm a kid. And the first thing, you know, we dressed these stones last time we were talking about the wheel dresser, but... You could see here, it's the, you know, these stones are just generic stones and that's so great, but uh, it's great for general purpose grinding. The most important thing you want to do when grinding down a tool is to have some water nearby for constant quenching because you do not want this tip to lose its temper and get so, uh, you know, to the point where it's not hard anymore. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dress the stone like this here and we're going to turn this like this and just put some kind of point on here and we'll, we'll take it as we, as we feel as we're going. We'll see how this develops. Worst comes to worst, we could take it back a little bit, but if this had a longer shaft, I would just redress the shaft. But since it's, this is an awkward place to be in, let's see what kind of tip we can put on here to make it a usable tool again. Okay, we, uh, we're happy with this profile here. It's a nice convex uh, profile that will give a lot of strength to the point here. Now, you could see it's kind of a rough grind because we're using a stone. And a stone doesn't have any give like a belt does, so you'll never get that nice finish. If you try and do all your restorations with only a stone, uh, people will think you were stoned when you're doing your restorations. So you always have to uh, have a... A belt, the give of a belt, will take out and really blend this in and make it look nice. So let's go to the belt. Now, I wanted to emphasize there's different parts of the belt that you can use that have more or less give. You can see here in the middle, it has a lot of give. And I always remove the platen from my belt sanders because I like that give. But if I want to move up a little bit right under that top wheel, 
you could see it's much stiffer and you could get a much different grind from the same belt. So depending on where you work that belt, whether in the middle or near the top roller, you will have a different effect on how that uh, metal comes out. Okay, we're calling this project done. You know, there is something very satisfying about a, uh, dressing a chisel that's been broken or something. And here we did, we just took this down to a, just a, a point that's a very strong point. This uh, is supported the whole way through. It's a very strong point and uh, it's a good general purpose punch. Again, we can always cut it down, do something else later on. Uh, let's try it out and see how it works. We'll put a little punch hole with that... Uh, that pencil mark is here. What's nice is you can lean this to the side, get it to where you want it in the middle here, and then using your brass hammer, just give it a nice little punch, and you could see the the uh, the punch that it does make. It is a a very nice uh, starting hole. You could see that it makes. You know you can vary it by hitting it harder, making the hole wider because of that uh, that profile of that punch. This is a a nice profile. I don't have one of these, and now this one will uh, be put back into service. Never throw away a broken tool. Okay, next up, you remember I said I want to make a base for this hammer. You know, just something uh, that we did this hammer a couple weeks ago, and what it is, it was a uh, some machinist-made hammer that we just you know, cleaned it up, and it's a beautiful little hammer, lovely, and it has a hole in the bottom. We thought, what a great way to put on a base and mount it, right? So. I said, you know what, maybe we can use some of this material. Now, for those of you not familiar, you've probably seen this a hundred times in my videos if you're a subscriber. This is a Corian uh, drop, they call it. But you see here, I got it on the Lazy Susan. Now, you're going to laugh when you see, you've seen this before. You see it works great. I've had heavy things on there, nice and smooth. You say, wow, that's, you know, something else. <laughs> Let me show you how this is done. All I did was and i needed something i was showing something on one of my videos i wanted to show it in a circle so i quick grab one of these lazy susan bearings which you can get they're inexpensive and uh, i just taped it on with blue tape and that was years ago and this thing holds up now corian is a trademark and what it is uh, they use this stuff it's a man-made material uh they use it for countertops and all kinds of things like that it's uh, supposed to be better than granite uh, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I've used this hundreds of times. And the reason I have is because there was a factory up the street from me. And if you notice this, this shape, um, what they did was they used to throw out these blank. These insides were when they were making counters. They used to make bathroom sinks and kitchen sinks. And they would throw out these oval and round discs. And on the way home from work... I would stop by the dumpster and I grab a whole bunch of Cory and all they comes in all different colors and uh, you know they had rails of it. I, I got I must have 150, 200 pounds of this stuff. I just was sticking it under the porch. I just you know because the stuff can be expensive on eBay. Um, I've made all kinds of things out of it: pens, tops, you know, you name it. Uh, but uh, this one here, I, you know, I ran the the edge around the. Uh, my router table to make it smooth so it's a, it's a presentable table but i like i said i have a whole bunch of this stuff in all different colors so why don't we take a piece of this here this is another piece of blank of junk garbage and uh, we'll cut a circle out we'll put a little uh holder in for the middle of that hammer and let's have some fun let me show you how you work with corey first thing you do take a small piece of blue tape put it down put your corner of your compass there and draw a circle. Now it's going to be hard to see this circle because it's pencil on this uh, Corian. This Corian's not, uh, if it was white, you would see it much easier. But, you know, we'll make a nice circle. This doesn't have to be super accurate because what we're going to do is we're going to put on the lathe and true it up. Okay, so we have a circle and we have that point, that little point there. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to drill a little hole into that uh, point. And we're going to cut this out using a jigsaw or saber saw. Okay, we didn't use a particularly fine blade here. We just used a regular uh, jigsaw blade. You see, we cut it out. Now, we're not trying to get close to the line. We let the lathe do that. We're just going outside of the line, get a basic disc cut out. You could cut this stuff with a handsaw. Very forgiving. Let's uh, drill a hole 
mount a bolt in here and put on the now lathe. You can see we mounted a bolt onto here. That's just to hold it. We could put this in the lathe now and uh, and we can turn this. So let's okay, do here's it. Here's the setup here. You can see we put the blank into the lathe using that bolt in here. And we drilled a little tiny pilot hole in the back of the bolt just to give it some added support. I always like, you know, rigidity. We always say about rigidity. Now we're going to turn this like this and we're going to run this little uh, cutter here back and forth across here until we have it true. Okay, now that we've made a mess of our lathe and we've trued this up nicely, you can see here, watch the outer edge here. Okay, it's nice and true now. What we want to do is put a nice little chamfer on this end, and then we will wet sand this to get a nice polish on it. And uh, and then we'll figure out a little, uh, little probe in the middle that we could put the hammer on so let's put a chamfer on here we'll take a different tool and do that okay we change the tools now we're going to do this freehand just by uh bringing this out and bringing it down until we get you know where we want we're just going to knock this edge off here okay now you can see what we did here we just put a little contour, a little bevel on the edge, using just freehanding it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sanding pads and we're gonna wet sand it from coarse down to fine and, and make this edge fine, okay? And then uh, uh, we're gonna put a, uh, obviously a towel down before because we don't wanna get any water on the lathe. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, now going through those sanding pads took about five, not even five minutes. And look, you see how this nice, let me zoom in. Look at that nice edge we got on there. See that? Isn't that pretty? A Corian is fun to work with. It really is. I mean, you could stack it up. You could turn it. You can drill it. You know, it's very easy. It's forgiving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a little uh, plastic polish, Plastex Meguiar's. We're just going to put a little uh, shine on the edge there and uh, watch how this comes out. Okay, here we go. Here's our little base, and you can see here, look at that edge, huh? Not, not a thing of beauty. And uh, I've made so many, I made spin tops out of these, this stuff. Um, just a, a lovely, you know, thing to work with. I don't know how great as a counter, you know, as a countertop it is, if anybody has a Corian counter. I don't know how it is with heat. I think heat can affect, I don't know. But it, it's fun to play with, especially when you can buy it like this. So tomorrow we'll come up. i uh, going to have some lunch, some dinner. Tomorrow we'll come up and we'll make that little base that this will fit in here so that this will sit on it like that. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, it's a hot one today, so we're going to try and get in and out quick. Now, instead of just putting this, uh, we want to use a piece of Delrin to go into this tube here. Instead of using just a piece of uh, blank Delrin, we like to have a transitional piece, something to go between the Delrin and here for just for appearance sake. And I have these, uh, these are shock absorber washers for the buses. Years ago when we used to work in the shop, for some reason, they didn't use all of the washers that came with the shock absorbers. And when they used to throw them out, I used to grab them. I said, you know, these can always come in handy for something. They had usually two different diameter holes, I guess maybe top and bottom. I don't know. But um, we can use one or the other. We could put this here like this. Turn this down like that, and that'll give you a nice transitional piece if you know what I'm talking about. So first thing we got to do is we got to turn this down to this diameter, then flip it, and then do the back. So let's do that now. Okay, here is our completed base. You can see here we fabricated this on the lathe. This fits, uh, that bottoms out actually into here. And there's no slop from side to side. Just a beautiful slip fit, okay? We drilled and tapped this. We also reduced this base here that will fit through the washer. Nice fit like this. We'll go flat against here. And you see we countersunk this bottom piece for the screw. And uh, we'll put this all together. I'll show you what it looks okay, like. Okay, here's our completed base. Uh, something unusual, made from, from scrap. Nothing costs anything. You can see how this handle fits right on there. Nice fit, Doesn't not hard to take on or off, you know. 
it's just a, uh, a lovely little base. And it also has, you can see here how this works. You can spin it, you can take it off and one, two, three, on and off. Here's the cool thing. It also acts as a little bit of a Euler's disc. Okay, so you're saying a Euler's disc? What's, what's a Euler's disc? That's a Euler's disc. Pretty slick. So in closing, uh, there's an old expression that says, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's so true with so many things. And it's the same thing with down here with especially working on the lathe and, and doing some of these other operations we do. Um, the more you do it, the more comfortable you are doing it. And uh, sometimes you don't want to get stale. So every once in a while I get a craving to get on the lathe. So that's why today's project was so much fun, especially turning Delrin and Corian. You know, they're fun items to work with. Not like when you're working with hard steels and things like that. And you're dealing with cutting fluid and the smoke and everything. So it's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks again for subscribing to Weekend Shedhead. Really appreciate you guys. And take care. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye now.